Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for your time today. It's uh, very daunting uh, to get up here after those wonderful talks earlier this afternoon. Um, I'm here to talk to you about the next generation of, of the internet, the way we see it, uh, in particular, uh, the mobile internet. Um, I have the mobile internet here with my notes, <laughs> so hopefully the mobile internet keeps working. Um, one of the, <laughs> the, the reason I chose this topic today is uh, that I, I believe that we're basically at a turning point for how the internet may or may not look in the next year or two. And uh, I, I think it can go a number, a number of ways. And uh, I think that the crux of this is whether or not it will be an open internet focused on enabling innovators and creative individuals, um, as this room is full of, um, or more of a walled garden approach. So it's, it comes down to basically uh, um, whether it will be a, an internet where anyone can generate an idea and very quickly make it available to everyone the world over, or an internet that looks suspiciously like the pre-internet days of, of walled gardens. <clears throat> For me, the mobile internet means to be able to grab my phone and have access to anything everywhere. I'm currently holding in my hand my presentation <laughs> Um, because I'm not quite as uh, professional a speaker as some of the others. And I made this presentation largely on this phone on an airplane. The mobile web is rapidly becoming accessible to people everywhere, and more rapidly than you might think. Um, in particular, uh, about 2008, something really interesting happened uh, that we at Google saw. What happened was uh, mobile internet search spiked radically all of a sudden. And it was so sudden that we thought, oh, something's gone wrong with the way we track things. And so we started looking into it a bit. And it turns out that what actually happened was two things were happening at the same time. The first was a large group of people in a very large demographic all of a sudden seemed to have managed to get phones that had really good browsers and pretty good internet connections. And then the second thing, which was the catalyst for this, was China Mobile, the world's largest uh, mobile services provider, drop their data access rates by 50%. So the subsequent growth has basically continued since that day in 2008, um, with the subsequent impact that people today with good phones, uh, with fast phones and good browsers particularly, search and use the internet and other kinds of online information services more than 20 times more than people with older phones and less capable browsers. Oops, that's what I'm supposed to do, sorry. <laughs> I knew there was something to do. I'm not going to read these bullets, but um, you can glance at them if you want. But what it's, what it's trying to tell us is that the computer that I'm holding in my hand is roughly 10 times more powerful than a PC of eight years ago. That's a pretty staggering fact when you think about uh, the portability and the utility of a device like this. There are 3.2 billion mobile subscribers in the world today, more than half the population of the planet. Um, the cost of a device like this one that has a great browser, has good capabilities, is dropping rapidly. The adoption of these devices is going up at a very, very fast rate. I mentioned before the two broad approaches to building applications for innovators to deliver to people around the world. Uh, for full disclosure, I used to be an executive at America Online years ago, so I'm very familiar with the first model, which is called the walled garden model. And the, the wall, in the walled garden model, um, there's a very real belief that the best experience for consumers is an integrated one where, that brings the hardware device and the software together in a very contained way so that consumers have a very simple set of choices, a very limited set of choices, but a very uh, complete design experience for how the device is, uh, is, is used. Um, the second model is a bit more uh, Old West, if you want, which I like to call innovation without permission. And innovation without permission model means that if you have a good idea, you should be able to throw it out there and just see what happens. People will like it or they won't. They'll vote with their minds and their hearts and their time or they won't. These are two very different visions of the world. Um, the differences, I believe, are fundamentally not cosmetic. Um, they actually affect the rate of innovation and the rate of competition. Before the revolution on the internet in the 1990s, uh, a world existed when people actually had computers, it turns out. And uh, they did a lot of things with them besides recipes. They used their laptops and they used their desktops. Um, they went out, if they had a specific operating system and they found a piece of software they wanted, they decided which operating system they had, they found the software for that thing, they took it physically home from the store, I suppose, and they installed it. And it, probably it worked for a while until it didn't work. Um, 
But the point was, once you got it working, that was sort of it. Like, you weren't going to go the next day and say, well, maybe I'll try that other word processor. That wasn't going to happen because it was just going to be too hard. You were going to look at it and say, you know, how do I move these documents I produced? How am I going to move them to that new machine? And we like to think we're all technically adept and everything, but the reality is that people say, it's just not worth the hassle. I'm not going to do it. And as a result, you didn't try that new thing. And maybe when you decided, oh, maybe I'd like to get a new computer, you're like, oh my goodness, what a hassle this is going to be. Maybe I'll just stick with what I have. And so you didn't try that new thing. And my computer's not rotating properly here. The, the, the model, um, excuse me. Oh, there we are. This is a standard Google presentation upward and to the right. Um, the internet is accelerating. This is not a very new concept. It's true, but what is new is that the mobile web is accelerating. And this is an interesting graph for the simple reason that it flattened out, now it's not flattened again. And if you take a look at this, what this is showing is that innovation in the way web browsers are developed is rapidly accelerating. Like, it's, it's changing unbelievably much every day. And this isn't the case, this wasn't the case five, six years ago. Things in the web browser world were sort of quiet, things had sort of settled out, but that's not true anymore. There's an enormous amount of innovation happening, largely driven through mobile technology. Today, on the internet, a single person with a single idea, in a very cheap way, can produce something and deliver it to the world. This fundamental concept has been the basis of a lot of very interesting companies, of one, one of which I'm employed at, but there are many others, from Twitter to Facebook, Amazon to eBay, Yahoo. These companies, I claim, were not possible in a world where they couldn't reach everybody with a single new idea. The way I like to think of this is that the cost of failure for innovators has dropped radically. Um, not maybe the cost emotionally, like one of the earlier speakers talked about, which was a very interesting and disturbing talk, I felt. <laughs> um, but, but, but the cost of failure uh, from an investment point of view, from a time point of view. You can try something, experiment with it, and say, this is a wonderful success, or just a misguided idea that people aren't interested in, very, very rapidly. Because you can deploy something and offer it to the world's people, and people will discover it, through tweets and blogs and search and a million other mechanisms that didn't exist before. This is the magic of the internet. The mobile internet may or may not look like this. In fact, the reality of the mobile internet today is that it resembles more the world before our current internet. There's dozens and dozens of hardware providers, lots of different operating systems and other kinds of platform thingy stuff. Um, there's wireless carriers by the dozens and hundreds and thousands. And there's all these business deals that you really know nothing about. And those fundamental things go into, the, into, into forming the basis of your decision making for the question, which, which phone should I buy? Which, which phone should I use? Y you don't really know. And other people are making these decisions for you to a large degree today. It's true that, okay, well, there's a lot of operating systems, there's a lot of phones, there's a lot of wireless providers. Isn't that sort of a good thing for competition? It probably is a good thing. The question is, is it a better thing than having an open internet with a lot of open standards where anybody can develop services for the rest of us? And this is the main crux of the idea that I'm trying to put forward today about the future of mobile internet. And in, in fact, because the internet, by definition in the future, will be entirely mobile, the internet. What's happened of rec recently with the development of new technologies and, and sort of sufficient power on phones is that browsers have become very good on modern browsers, on modern phones. So you can buy a Palm Pre, you can buy an Apple iPhone, you can buy an Android phone. All of these have one really important thing in common. They have almost exactly the same browser. In fact, they have the same browser. And as a result of that, the amount of people who are actually developing um, code to help going into these browsers and putting their wonderful ideas for making better experiences for consumers um, is just exploding right at this moment. Without talking about what this actually is saying, what it's actually saying is they're getting faster. And when things get fast enough, they become useful enough that people use them more. And this is happening at a, at a basically a tipping point has happened with this. Phones have become fast enough 
batteries have become good enough, processors have become advanced enough. There's been enough engineering trickery jammed into the handheld device that you can do amazing things. And when you get this many users doing this much stuff on their phone, the world flocks to it. And it becomes the basis for a whole new generation of innovation. I have a, a short video uh, to show a, a very simple example. It's just a minute long of uh, a couple of examples of, uh, of things that have been built at Google um, around delivering applications inside the browsers where you can build an application one time, you invest all of your time and energy into thinking about what that is, you develop it one time, you design it one time, and then it's accessible across all the phones that have these types of browsers. So maybe I'll just stop at this point and show that video for a second. In this one, you're seeing a, a, a mail application. This is actually Gmail. Um, and in this application, what we're showing is some very simple uh, but very fast experience. You're doing mail. There's some swipe options. You're saving the mail. The mail is actually being sent uh, offline. If there's no network connection necessary to do all of this. All of the power of an offline application inside a browser. The next example, there's a little airplane convincing you on actually on an airplane. Here's another demo. In this case, what you're going to see is a, a, native mail, a native application. If you have an iPhone, you've seen this a lot. It's the map application. You're going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to pan around. We're going to change to a map view. It's all happening very fast. You see it's very useful because the phone's fast enough. And what we're going to do next is we're going to change from this view and go back to a, another implementation of this same Maps application but inside of a web browser. And the reason this is Im impressive is not that it's going to look any different. It's going to look exactly the same, so it's not that great a demo. But what it is going to show you is that it's running in a browser. This same application can run in a Palm Pre. It can run on any phone with a good browser, an Android, iPhone, Pre, and a bunch of other phones about to sort of uh, explode onto the scene. So just like your home computer has been in the past, you don't need, with these map applications or mail, you don't need to worry about disk space. Potentially, you don't even need to worry about losing your phone, although you probably should still worry about losing your phone today. Um, you won't worry about you know, your disk crashing, running out of memory. All of those things can be a thing of the past because your mail basically lives somewhere that's safer. So you want to change phones, you can change phones. Your information comes with you. You want to change platforms, you can change platforms. Your information will come with you. So this is my vision of the internet, one in which all of you can reach all of the world's people very simply and very quickly. Thank you.